right, so this is actually lesson 5.1. So 5.1, the goal by the end of class today is that we can all simplify a rational expression of any degree. So there's a few steps. Step one, you want to factor completely. So we'll see what that means in a second, but you, you, pro you have an idea of what factoring means with polynomials already. We've done a lot of factoring. Number two is divide out common factors. So it's kind of like reducing the fraction like you did in your opener. And then number three, state answers. with restrictions. There's only one thing a denominator cannot equal. What is it? Denominators and fractions cannot equal what? Right. So, so that's an equal sign with a little cross through it. Cannot equal zero. And that's going to play out when we have variables and denominators. We're going to have to expressly say that certain variables cannot equal certain values in order that the denominators don't equal zero. Next, we're going to look at examples of three types. Example one is when we're kind of the simplest form is monomial divided by monomial. Okay. So, right, that's just one term over one term. So 60V divided by 12V squared. Okay, so then factor completely. There's no factoring in monomials. Or check on step one. Step two, divide out common factors. Okay, so again, just like we did in the opener, what do 60 and 12, what is their greatest common factor? This is where knowing your multiplication facts come in handy. 12, you're right. So divide numerator and denominator by 12. 60 divided by 12 is 5. Excuse me. And 12 divided by 12 is 1. And then separately, we consider the variables. Now, if we just have a variable with no exponent, what exponent can we write in? A 1, right? So. Like we said earlier, with the higher degree being in the denominator, we're going to subtract 2 minus 1, which is 1. And we're going to leave it in the denominator since that's where the exponent is greatest. Now we have some extra things in here that we don't need, like the 1 here and the 1 here. So to write this as a fully simplified expression, we can just write it as 5 over v. So we've stated the answer, and now we need to state the restrictions. When we're stating the restrictions, we actually go back to the beginning, and we go, okay, what would make this denominator equal to zero? Okay, so we're going to write 12v squared equals zero. Now this one's fairly obvious, right? What makes this zero? We divide both sides by 12 and square root both sides. I mean, V 
equals zero. If v were zero, the denominator would be zero. So our excluded, there's only one excluded value here. So is uh, zero. You like that little squiggle mark? That's the notation. That's called set notation. So we're going to write our excluded values in the form of set notation. One more example like that. B. 27 r to the fifth over 45 r to the fourth. Considering 27 and 45, I look for my greatest common factor. My greatest common factor here is, well, we can look at the, low, the least, the smaller of the two. Right? Our greatest common factor can't be any larger than 27. So I can go, okay, what are the factors of 27? Well, does 27 go into 45? That's the first question. Nope. Uh, so then, I'm going to do my little scratch work over here if I want. 1 times 27, 2 doesn't go in, 3 goes in, 3 times 9. Anything else go into 27? Nope, that's it. So these are my factors of 27. So I'm going to 27 doesn't go into 45. Does 9 go into 45? It does. I know some of you recognize that right off the bat, and that is good. So we're going to divide numerator and denominator by 9 leaving us with 27 divided by 9 is 3, 45 divided by 9 is 5, yep, and then looking at our variables here, in order to subtract the exponents, we've only seen where the variable has the same base, so that's important that they're both R's or V's, we wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. Uh, so 5 is larger, so I'm going to do 5 minus 4, and that's just going to be 1, right? 5 minus 4 is 1. So final answer here is 3r over 5. Oh, got to tell me when you can't see it. <laughs> uh, and then we go back to the beginning for our excluded value. What would make 45 r to the fourth equal zero? What value for r? You can look at it and tell me. What is it? What's our excluded value this time? Zero, right? If we divide both sides by 45, took the fourth root of both sides, excluded value this time is zero again. When we're talking about a monomial in the denominator. If there's a variable involved, zero is going to be your excluded value. Number example two, so the second type, we'll look at a couple with binomial divided by binomial. So this is where some factoring comes into play, our first step. So 3n minus 5, over 10n minus 20. And we look to factor 3n minus 5, but there's nothing to factor out. 10n minus 20, we can factor out a 10. So I could rewrite this as 10. The GCF between 10n and 20 is 10. And then n minus 20 divided by 10 is 2. Now can we factor anything out of these two? There's nothing to cancel out, right? So we can actually leave our answer as 3n minus 5 over 10n minus 2 
And now, so that's kind of our final answer. We look to see what would make this denominator zero. So what would make 10 n minus 2 equals 0? Divide both sides by 10, right? So n minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. So n equals 2. So then my excluded value is 2. Oh, I got that sign. Next one, another one like this. I'm going to do it right here. No, that's ugly. I'll flip it. Uh, this part B of example two. Uh, if we had x, oh, sorry, that would be 15, whatever, 15x plus 5 over 15x plus 25. I'm noticing a lot of fives. I'm feeling there's going to be a 5 GCF here. Factor out that numerator, and we have a 5 in common. So I could rewrite that as, is there still a trash can there? Yeah, I just missed it. <laughs> this is so close. Uh, so factoring out a 5, I could rewrite this as, 15 divided by, 15x divided by 5 is 3x, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Same thing down here, we could divide by 5, so leaving us with 3x plus 5. So in this case, we see that the we have a that one's a kind of obvious one because it's 5 over 5, so those cancel out. And that's step 2 that says divide out the common factors. So then we're just left with 3x plus 1 over 3x plus 5. What's next? The excluded value, or values, yep. What makes this denominator equal 0? So what makes 5 times 3x plus 5 equal 0? <coughs> Divide by 5, we, we still have 0. First subtract the 5, then divide by 3. So then x equals negative 5 thirds. So my excluded value is negative 5 thirds. Two more examples. We have a third type, and this is generically higher order. We're going to be dividing higher order polynomials. <coughs> so we have A. This is where it gets more fun. K squared plus 17K plus 72 over K plus 9. Step 1, factor. 
We have a trinomial. We have to recall how to factor a trinomial. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get 72 and add to get 17. What are they? 72. What goes into 72? I heard someone whisper, 9 and 8. That's right. 9 times 8 is 72, adds to 17. So I can factor this into k plus 9, k plus 8. Isn't that cool? Do you see what just happened? What? Now here's something you kind of have to get in your head. Numerators and denominators, like this denominator here, you kind of have to throw in some imaginary parentheses, okay? And then it makes it a little more obvious. You see what just happened there? Boom. Look at that common factor. Boom. So we're left with our final solution is k plus 8. There's, we say there's nothing left in the denominator. When things cancel out, they actually become a 1. So this is like k plus 8 over 1, which we don't need to write the 1. That's our answer. But don't forget, this is where it's extra important, to look back at your original denominator to figure out what are your excluded values. What makes k plus 9 equal 0? Not hard, right? Just subtract the 9. So k equals negative 9. So I'm going to write my excluded value, negative 9. Don't even try and put a negative 9 in for k. It's going to make the denominator 0. Last one. Four v squared minus eight v plus four over v cubed minus ten v squared plus nine v. V what? That's a three, yes. Step one, factor everything, right? So in the numerator, I notice that there's a 4. They all have a 4 in common. So I'm going to first factor out the 4, leaving with v squared minus 2v plus 1. But I have a trinomial, so I can factor that further. I see a perfect square trinomial. Does anybody else see a perfect square trinomial here where the first term is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, and the middle is twice the product of their square roots? Yeah, I know you did. So I can rewrite this, and we can always go back to the t-chart method, right? We can always go, what multiplies to get 1 and adds to get negative 2? When these two numbers are the same, that's when you know you've actually hit a perfect square trinomial without even realizing it. So I'm running out of space. I'm going to kind of rewrite this over here. I'm going to rewrite this as 4 v minus 1. I could write that as v minus 1 squared, but I'm going to write it out just so we can see clearly the common factors. Now in the denominator, each one of these has a common factor of v to start, so we're going to factor that out. What the? Is this a perfect square trinomial? Perfect square, perfect square, but it fails the test at the middle. So it's not a perfect square trinomial. So I need to find out what two numbers multiply to get 9, add to get negative 10. I'm going to wait for you guys to tell me what they are. You're on the right track. Something with 1. Negative 
Wait, does that even work? Negative one, negative nine times one. Negative, oh, negative nine and negative one. Thanks. Now we got it. Negative nine and negative one. Okay, so V outside. And then we got V minus nine, V minus one. So I'm going to rewrite that over here. V outside, V minus nine, V minus one. Again, guys, this is exciting stuff. Do you see the common factor now? Yeah, it is. Boom. So then, my final answer is what's left? 4v minus 1 over v, v minus 9. <sighs> this is going to be the hang up. You have to go all the way back to the. This represents the initial denominator, right? This is just the denominator in factored form. So you have to go all the way back there to figure out your excluded values. So I'm going to write that out. What makes this equal 0? Since there are three factors here, there are going to be three things that make this denominator potentially equal 0. So we set each one equal to 0. V equals 0, V minus 9 equals 0, and V minus 1 equals 0. Done. Add 9 to both sides here. Add 1 to both sides here. So our excluded values here would be 0. I'm going to write them in order. 0, 1, and 9. And that's simplifying rational expressions. That's it. For our homework, do we have to um, write the excluded values in here? Yes, you do. Thanks for asking, Kimberly.